<laughs> Although Nickelodeon is mostly regarded as a sad, shambling mess nowadays, the network really has had some amazing shows over its 36-year history. Many of its original cartoons were so creative that they themselves founded new cartoon styles and had groundbreaking effects on Western animation. For the longest time, Nick was destroying Cartoon Network in the ratings. And it was no wonder. The original Nickelodeon was creative, fascinating, and often disturbing. So today, let's take a look back at the top 10 best Nickelodeon shows of all time. For the shows on this list, they have to stand the test of time and still be good as an adult, not just be a nostalgic childhood favorite. So if I could only enjoy it as a child, it probably won't be on this list. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10. Rocco's Modern Life. Out of all the animated shows, there was always just so much creativity in Rocco. While I liked all the colorful characters and weird imagery as a child, as an adult, I really enjoyed watching Rocco's bizarre suburban life and the constant satires of her own world. It's really interesting just watching Rocco interact with this strange, surreal, sometimes terrifying world he lives in. And the amount of controversy this show got away with was just ridiculous. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Rocco! Mrs. Bighead? Next to Animaniacs, Rocco was the leader in constantly giving the big middle finger to the censors. I mean, the most controversial moment is the second freaking episode. Rocco gets lured into the home of a female mutant frog who tries to seduce him before finally drugging his drink. Jeebus! This is bizarre. Even their title cards contain titles like, who gives a fuck? Shit's heads, they didn't even try to hide that one. The freaking pub is called The Choking Chicken. It seems like the whole point of this show was just to see how much they could get away with. And it can get so cleverly surreal from just the simplest daily activities. For example, he wants to go to the mall to buy a dog bowl. So he drives to the parking lot, up the parking lot garage looking for a space so high that he ends up in orbit. They then take an astro lift down to the first level so fast that they're crushed by the G-force. Interestingly, the staff from Rocco's Modern Life actually went on to create SpongeBob SquarePants, which, when you think about it, is a fairly similar show. Both at heart are just two guys living an average suburban life. The only real difference is that SpongeBob has a much more positive, upbeat attitude towards his humdrum activities, while Rocco struggles to adapt all the way through. It was a tough choice, but I think Rocco's Modern Life deserves to be on the list. Don't even think about talking here. Uh -huh. Gotcha. And the ninth best is... Hey Arnold. This is probably the most whimsical show on the list. Despite the rough, choppy animation of the characters, it feels like one of the most real Nickelodeon shows ever made. At first, I wasn't sure whether to put this one on the list or not, because despite the heavy impact it had on me, it didn't really leave me feeling positive or upbeat like most of the other shows. In fact, half the time, I didn't know how to feel about some of the endings. A lot of the time, there was no ending punchline. It simply finished as it was. Happy or sad, the show just ended. Although the main character, Arnold, essentially plays the everyman, the characters around him are just so colorful. Characters like his grandparents are full of so much more life than Arnold, despite being 70 odd years older than him. Gonna give you 24 hours to dangle, eh? That's right. Big guy, huh? Slow, but with lots of power. Squash you like a bug, eh? But probably the most interesting character is the head bully, Helga. At first she seems like a generic bully, shoving, spitballing, and picking on Arnold. But then you realize she secretly loves Arnold. And I don't mean just your average high school crush. You ignore me, but deep down you know how I really feel. She is absolutely obsessed with Arnold, to a very creepy level, all while bullying him mercilessly. That makes for a really interesting character. Apart from here, I've actually never seen this done before. But as a kid, this really made me think. What are people's real motivations? motivations for what they do. My child mind could not come to terms with someone who acted so nasty on the outside, absolutely adoring them on the inside. 
And I like that message, that sometimes appearances can be deceiving. This show taught me so much as a kid. It subtly showed me that each person has their own world, their own individual motivations. Hey Arnold felt real. It didn't sugarcoat anything. It is a wonderful slice of life cartoon, and I still remember it to this day. So what do you think we'll be doing in 70 years? We're looking at this comet again. Yes, sir. Of course I won't be. I'll be, you know. Nah, no you won't, Phil. Will you stop calling me Phil? Number 8. Rugrats. The first thing I always think when I see Rugrats is cute. But frankly, despite that innocent exterior, Rugrats has had an astronomical impact. It was the first big game changer for Nickelodeon. Even today, when I think Nickelodeon, Rugrats is the first thing that leaps to mind. But I've often wondered why. Why exactly was a show about toddlers the big game changer for Nickelodeon? I think it's actually because the ideas were always very creative and unique, despite the deceptively simple setup. I mean, there's so much creativity purely in watching how these kids interpret the world with their wild imaginations. And all we gotta do is grow them the same way my grandpa grows his crooked squat. <gasps> Every episode I re-watched, I would always go, Oh, I remember this. It's like every single episode had left an impact on me growing up. Just seeing these tiny problems become gigantic through Tommy, Chucky, Phil and Lil's innocent perspective. It should be corny to me, but damn, it was creative and fun to watch unfold. Even after 30 freaking years, Rugrats still holds the number one all-time rating for Nickelodeon. Probably the most well-known episode is where Angelica breaks a leg and Tommy's family has to wait on her hand and foot. Mostly for this one line. Stu, what are you doing? Making chocolate pudding. It's four o'clock in the morning. Why on earth are you making chocolate pudding? Because I've lost control of my life. The only thing that bothered me about the show was that Angelica is the most unpleasant, annoying, nasty brat that ever dawned Nickelodeon. You know what? She still sings better than Hannah Montana. I mean, I get that she's playing a character, but the problem is that Angelica plays the spoiled brat role so well that I ended up loathing her so much that I enjoyed the show less. But I guess that just shows how good the acting performances were. Rugrats is a massive cultural milestone, and all it was was watching a bunch of kids with big imaginations. I really enjoyed watching Rugrats again, so it easily makes a list. Number 7 Stand back, boy. My life as a teenage robot. An angsty teenager who's also a killer robot. That combination is freaking awesome. Jeez, I love the animation on this one. It reminded me of that original Teen Titans style. It's that wonderful, affectionate hybrid of both Japanese and Western animation, paying homage to both. Jenny the 16-year-old robot actually reminds me of a far more incompetent and brash Astro Boy. Never let me do anything I want! Work, work, work! I never get to have any fun! If you don't let me go, I'll... Don't you raise your lasers to me, young lady! The story is actually very similar to Astro Boy 2. Jenny tries to balance both protecting the Earth from unspeakable robot horrors and living a normal teenage life. And like Astro Boy, it's actually a very believable struggle. What I like about the show is that it doesn't feel like it's pandering to the teenage demographic. I genuinely believe Jenny is a brash teenager when I see her. Even small details like her mannerisms. When I see this body language, I think of a 16-year-old teenage girl. The show also really immerses you in its colourful, futuristic setting. It's part of what I love about shows like this or Futurama. The fascinating ideas and imagination you can create with this futuristic setting. Beyond making it a boring, old, corrupted, desolate, hopeless wasteland. Everything about this show just screams unique. All I can say is, yes Nickelodeon, good work. My life as a teenage robot is the way to go. More of this please, less of this please. Number 6. 
He's a phantom. Day phantom. Congratulations, Nickelodeon. You did it again. You made a teenager cartoon that wasn't pandering. All of us here are so proud of you. To start with, the main character Danny isn't cool. In fact, he's a complete dork. These feel like real people. The sister actually feels like a real, insecure, overprotective 16-year-old sister. The teenagers start protests, they poke fun at each other, they subtly attempt to shift the conversation back to themselves. These are what real teenagers do. Ugh, I'm a creature of the night doomed to a family of mourning people. The story is essentially 14-year-old Danny just gets turned into a phantom ghost and uses his newfound powers to fight off ghosts. It's a simple premise, but the show has such a unique charm and creativity Activity that you don't even notice. And the theme song is catchy as hell. When he first woke up, he realized he had snow white hair and glowing green eyes. He could walk through walls, disappear, and fly. Damn, now this is a cool song. The jokes are actually funny. The atmosphere is kind of ghostly and spooky. It's got three-dimensional characters. It's a fun story. It's got an exceptional soundtrack. Unfortunately, like all good Nickelodeon shows, the series was cancelled by Nickelodeon. Danny Phantom was supposed to get another season, but Nickelodeon condensed the order and rushed it all to the end. I guess it was too good a cartoon for them to keep. Danny Phantom was innovative, sharp, quick, atmospheric. It was everything that Johnny Test should have been. Nickelodeon, you've done good. More of this, please. This time, you showed Cartoon Network how to do a good teenage show. <laughs> Number 5 Three, two. Drake and Josh and iCarly This one was a tough decision, but to me, these are the two miracle sitcoms of Nickelodeon. They were the two Nickelodeon sitcoms that were actually good. In fact, they were better than good. They were really funny. Both Drake and Josh, his family, his friends, and even the strangers they meet are all very likeable characters. Drake can be a bit shallow in a show-off, but they always make a point of seeing he gets his comeuppance for it, and he actually grows to be a better person throughout the series. Josh is simply my favorite Nickelodeon sitcom character ever. I love this guy. He's dorky but fun happy in his own self, and works brilliantly off Jake. Whenever these two came on screen, they always brought this earnest, positive energy to the screen with them. Now hug me, brother! The scripts from these shows actually have smart wordplay and clever jokes. I can pop onto any moment in Drake and Josh or iCarly, and I'll actually find a funny moment that makes me genuinely laugh. <laughs> For example, the entire first episode of iCarly is dedicated to poking fun at bad teen acting. No one enjoys that! iCarly is basically just about some teens wanting to get some attention on the internet, so they stir up some controversy. It feels like a very real, organic story. I could see teenagers actually doing this. And the shows feel wild. You believe these kids are good kids, but they still feel wild, quirky, and rule-breaking. Frankly, all these teen actors give likeable, great performances. And you know what? I'm happy to say all of them went on to do better things because of these shows. Fans love them, critics love them, and they deserved it. They had all given amazing performances for their age and they created believable, likeable characters from these shows. I probably prefer Drake and Josh a little more, but I personally think both these shows were the best of Nickelodeon sitcoms by far. You have my thanks, Schneider's Bakery. Mm. And for number four, Harvey Beaks. Harvey Beaks is the modern day reincarnation of all the things that originally made Nickelodeon great. This is simply a beautiful show. The art style is this gorgeous hybrid of both watercolour backgrounds and well-drawn characters. Every single character is three-dimensional and likeable. The setups are really unpredictable. It actually reminds me a lot of Steven Universe's style. Like Steven Universe, the show simply immerses you in this pleasant, simple and endearing world. A world where it's interesting just to be around these likeable characters and watch them interact. 
I really relate a lot to Harvey. He's a lot like Butters in just being very positive, kind-hearted, and well-meaning. Except much more prone to being obsessive compulsive. Who put this down without using the coaster? This is good wood. Okay, I'll just clean this up real quick, then it's back to being a rebel. He has only two close friends, struggles to adapt to change, and is a bit socially awkward. In other words, Harvey's a bit of an Aspie. My mom only buys a chunky peanut butter, but you don't care, right? Different! And you know what? That is freaking awesome! Asperger's is awesome, and we need more Aspies in modern shows. I really like this recent trend in cartoons, where the greatest strength of a main character is simply having a kind heart, and people flock to them because of it. I will say that it does walk a little closer to that fine line between being endearing and overly cloying than other shows. But if you do have a bit of cheese tolerance and like shows like Steven Universe, chances are you'll get a real kick out of Harvey Beaks. Harvey Beaks has flown a little bit under the radar so far, but I hope it does get more attention. And sadly, since it was a quality show with original ideas, Nickelodeon has put it on hold in favor of their revolutionary crap heaps. Good God, I hate breadwinners. It can push aside decent, innovative shows in favor of continuing to parade its crappiness. But hey, it hasn't been canceled yet, and Harvey Beaks is simply a beautiful, heartwarming show. Personally, I'll definitely be checking out the new episodes. I've also attached a link to the trailer in the description if you'd like to check it out. You scared? Yeah, but I'm ready to go home. And for number three, SpongeBob SquarePants, seasons one to three. Ah, SpongeBob, you're the massive marketing juggernaut of Nickelodeon. But part of its success was because the original three seasons were unforgettable classic animation. While modern SpongeBob seems to have lost most of its audience over 10, the general consensus is that season four is when the show started going downhill after the movie. This is probably because after season three finished, many of the original writers packed up and left. The writer who created Harvey Beaks originally wrote for seasons one to three, but once he left, things didn't look as good for SpongeBob. Suddenly, the show was focusing exclusively on a young demographic. Suddenly, all the characters had become one-dimensional and had barely any narrative. I'm just a shell of my former self. I hear you, Larry. But those first three seasons were incredible. These seasons had an amazing narrative flow. Its sense of humor could appeal to anyone. And it was always interesting watching this cheery sponge interact with his humdrum world. There was more of an adult feel to some of the jokes, but it still appealed to kids at the same time. My favorite character was probably Sandy. Of course there's no water. Nothing but air. I made Texas tea and cookies. Well, come on in. Hey! Until science became her only identity in later seasons, I liked how she was always this friendly, exotic alien from the surface. She was clearly a lot more intelligent than SpongeBob, but always welcomed his company with friendly, wide-open arms. Your song is true! If y'all want to be my friend, just be yourself! Simply watching the original SpongeBob go throughout his day, enjoying his simple job and finding the positive side in everything, was something many people could connect with all around the world. This made for a classic, unforgettable icon in cartoon history, even if it only lasted three seasons. And it's why we still instantly recognize him today. And I hope that someday, this little yellow fellow wins our hearts again. Bye, I... Nah. And the second best Nickelodeon show is... Avatar, The Last Airbender. Avatar really sticks out of Nickelodeon, seeming completely different from everything we've had so far. I mean, we've got Rugrats, Ren and Stimpy, Spongebob, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, an anime-esque completely artistic milestone with a deep engaging story about three martial artists. This show reminds me more of a Miyazaki film than it does Nickelodeon. Where the hell did this show come from? Avatar really is a unique cartoon. 
I can't think of another cartoon like it. The only other cartoon it kind of reminds me of is Teen Titans. And that's just because they both have that unique animation style. It's that affectionate Western interpretation of Japanese anime. Not only do I think the animation style is awesome, but I love how original it feels. Our three heroes follow Ash, Brock, and Misty from Pokemon's example, and travel from town to town. Except they're expanding their knowledge of martial arts while being hunted down by the youthful, fiery villain and his easygoing uncle. As well as the voice acting being really top-notch. A lot of the jokes in this show actually work. <laughs> yep, that's all I roll. And some of the messages in this show are surprisingly deep and powerful. It treats kids with the respect that they may actually be able to take the darker messages of life on board. Like, sometimes people can't be stirred and will lose all hope. And sometimes there are wars that cannot be won by simple hope and self-belief. Every single person in this show is a believable and interesting character. Even the villain plays this comedic stick in the mud, while his uncle is constantly trying to get him to relax. Relax a little. We need to leave now! Very well. On second thought, why don't you take another few minutes? And exposing himself. Avatar simply doesn't feel at all like any other Nickelodeon cartoon. It's not gross, cheap looking, or cheesy. It's a beautiful, detailed, innovative, immersive story. I personally think The Last Airbender is a masterpiece, and I think it easily deserves a second place on this list. I'm ready. Before we get to number one, I'd like to give a couple of quick honorable mentions. Ren and Stimpy. Even though this cartoon wasn't really my cup of tea as a kid, it was a massive milestone in controversial cartoons, and it certainly deserves a mention. Fairly Odd Parents. This one's another one that started off as brilliantly written and unique, but even as a teen, the voice acting never quite sat right with me. And with those mentions, on to number one. And the number one best Nickelodeon show is... Invader Zim. Honestly, Zim is the only cartoon that, regardless of age, I've always just loved. It doesn't matter how young I was or old I am. I've always adored this cartoon. At some level, it's always been what I've needed to see. No cartoon that has ever been cancelled has had the cultural impact Zim has. I've been captured! This show is deliciously dark. It took all the begrudging restraint Nick had before and let it go, giving us one of the darkest, most disturbing cult classics in cartoon history. Rebecca Sugar, the creator of Steven Universe, is so obsessed with this show that she wrote fan fiction of it. She adores this show. Hell, Paradox is essentially her Zim fan fictions come to life. This show is actually one of the most expensive Nickelodeon shows ever produced. Even 15 years later, I look at this animation and it looks beautiful. This show was a work of art both visually, as a cultural milestone, and the characters are some of the most memorable characters in cartoon history. You can still throw a Zim quote out to this day, and many people will still instantly recognize it. This show molded me as a person, particularly when I was a teen, and it is the Nickelodeon show I have just enjoyed watching over and over, year after year. It's dark undertone, it's timeless characters, it's unique style. I still can't think of a cartoon similar to Invader Zim over a decade later, because there's simply nothing like it out there. I personally think Zim was the best thing that ever came to Nickelodeon. I personally consider Invader Zim the absolute best Nickelodeon show of all time. Nowadays, a lot of mud is slung at Nickelodeon, but when you look back, these guys have already given us nearly two decades of quirky and imaginative cartoons. And even now, underneath the cracks, we're beginning to see hints of those original revolutionary cartoons being reborn. And it's my hope that one day, Nickelodeon will be in fierce competition with Cartoon Network again. Do you think I missed a particular show? Do you have a particular favourite yourself? I know there are a few Nickelodeon cartoons and sitcoms that didn't quite make the list, so feel free to let me know in the comments. A special thanks to both Clint and Eye of Soul, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.